I started to study nursing because my idea was to study medicine. My mother had a complication with the kidneys, and so she had to go through dialysis, and uh, we would do that four times a day. Obviously, the schooling helped me quite a bit in that aspect. Uh, because of that, uh, skills that we had learned in nursing school, and we were able to make her comfortable. And I was in Hidalgo, Texas, for the fight with Jeffrey Hill. And then when I was told that my mother passed, uh, we had to go back for the vigil, and then the burial the, the next day. And then after that, we turned to Hidalgo for the fight. I was very happy in that I was able to help my mother in her last days. You know, the passing of my mother is something that I always carry with me and something that has always given me resolve. That and the other many things that have happened in my career has given me strength. And we come with the, the total confidence to take this fight and win this fight. And the crowd readies now for the walk-in of Marco Antonio Rubio. Roy Jones, a couple of years ago, Rubio went the 12 round distance with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Does that suggest in any way that he might be qualified to stretch Gennady Golovkin out and go the distance? Now, that does not say that. I mean, he, does, he did go 12 rounds with Chavez, but Chavez is not quite as a vicious puncher in the early rounds as is Gennady Golovkin. Rubio is, though, doing better as his career goes on in these fights where he enters as an underdog. He was destroyed by Kelly Pavlik, who may be the best fighter he's fought so far. But he did better against Chavez Jr. And against Lemieux, he actually pulled off the upset. So whether it's because the opponents are slightly worse in these underdog scenarios, or whether he's getting better, he is faring better in these scenarios. And now as Rubio gets into the ring and you take a look at his most significant past fights, we turn our attention to Triple G. Gennady Gennadievich Golovkin rapidly gaining recognition as among the best of the best in this sport. His ascension to the top is the realization of big dreams, dreams supported and nurtured by the unique relationship he shares with his fraternal twin brother, Max. Max is my twin brother. 22 years ago, my first time I went to a boxing gym with my brother. They trained amongst uh, other young men that were in the neighborhood, you know, they're just friends, so it made it fun for them. We just fight as kids, yeah, sometimes in home, in the street, yeah. Max and Gennady uh, were very competitive when they were younger, so uh, it was easy to, uh, to excel at what they were doing. Gennady, I think, had the more fire in his, in his belly for it. Several times we had the, the, we were in the same competition, but we never fought each other. Either my brother or myself would uh, decide that we quit, we will not fight each other. Right now he's my second trainer. Max is a very integral part of our camp. Uh, more than anything, it's the, uh, the fact that he knows Gennady better than anybody else does. I'm just staying next to my brother and maybe I'm helping him psychologically be ready. I feel this is my role in this training camp. Max is uh, with us all the time, leading up to the fight, in the training, and in the tactic, and in the corner. Obviously, I will be given instructions, and Max will be also given instructions at, at different times, just to make sure that we all see what we're supposed to be seeing for Gennady's benefit. Uh, here's a fascinating footnote to that story. We've been told that there were several junctures during their mutual development when Cossack coaches and Cossack Boxing Federation officials actually thought that younger brother Max was the superior prospect. However, ultimately, it became clear that Max was going to defer to older brother, even though older brother is only 15 minutes older. Showing you, Roy Jones, what a strong cultural trait that is in Eastern Europe. Yes, very strong cultural trait. Back in the early biblical times, the older brother always had first dibs on everything. So the older brother all automatically was the boss. In this case, they adhered to the same thing, the same concept. And you know, these guys are so nice that I couldn't see one guy not backing up for the other. That's just how they live. And also, Gennady had the style that I think they both recognized, that everyone recognized, would translate better at the box office in the pros. Max was apparently a more technical fighter than Gennady, and Gennady was more aggressive. Gennady had four fights last year, Max Gellerman. 
three fights this year because he lost a date when his father unexpectedly died in February. He's adamant about his desire to fight four times next year. That's also a part of the growing star profile, Oh, this right? is what, all, what do we always talk about? Boxing fans are like, why doesn't this guy just fight all the time? And if he can't get the biggest stars in with him, fight the best available guy. That's Golovkin. He's not American. He's not Mexican. He's not Mexican-American, right? He doesn't have a built-in fan base that would be easy to market to. He has to become a star by being fan-friendly in and outside the ring. And fortunately, he is. He has a fan-friendly style in and out of the ring. Well, this feels like a love-in in Carson, California. Not terribly far from where he trains in Big Bear, California. And Golovkin makes clear that he is planning to move here to Southern California next year, bringing his wife and five-year-old son over from Stuttgart. He says he wants to make the move now so that his son can go to first grade in an American school. It's gonna be interesting to see the crowd response here in Southern California, an Eastern European fighting a Mexican fighter. If Gennady can win this crowd, he'll have really done something. Notable win. TKO3, TKO8, KO3, TKO10 again. 18 knockouts in a row. Highest knockout percentage of any middleweight titleist in history. Highest knockout percentage of any prominent fighter in the sport at this moment. And on the thrill meter, definitely number one. <laughs> Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen from StubHub Center, Carson, California, USA, this is the main event of the evening. And it's all brought to you by K2 Promotions in association with Promociones de Pueblo and Samson Boxing. Sponsored by Expo 2017 and Trichemo.com. 12 rounds of boxing for the middleweight championship of the world. Sanctioned by the IBO, the WBA for its super title, and the WBC for the mandatory challenge to their world title. This fight held under the auspices of the California State Athletic Commission, Chairman John Frierson, Executive Director Andy Foster. Because of weighing in above the middleweight limit, the challenger will be officially unable to capture the title if victorious. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bell, Raul Caiz Sr., Max DeLuca, and Robert Hoyle. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Jack Reese. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the fighters are in the ring and ready. Are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer, Robert Garcia, wearing black and officially weighing in at 161, three quarter pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one, consisting of 59 victories, including 52 wins by knockout, with six defeats and one draw. From Torreón, Coahuila, Mexico, the former WBF super middleweight world champion and former WEC interim world champion, El Veneno, Marco Antonio Rubio. And fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Abel Sanchez, wearing blue, official weight, 159 pounds. Since capturing an Olympic medal, he has a perfect professional record. 30 fights, 30 victories, including 27 KOs with 17 consecutive KOs to date. His 90% knockout ratio, the highest in middleweight champion's history. From Karaganga, Kazakhstan, the reigning, defending, middleweight champion of the world, Gennady Triple G. Oh, 
in. I gave you both instructions in the dress room. I just want to remind you, listen, obey my commands at all time, protect yourself at all time. God bless both of you and good luck. Triple G is the monster that everyone's come out to see. So far, against second tier opposition, the best guys that would get in the ring with him, he's either met expectations or exceeded them every time out. You ready? This might be his biggest fight so far. Can he do it again? Rubio's just a little bit longer and, of course, three inches taller. Well, now, and unofficially outweighs Golovkin eight pounds. Yes, Roy. In our first fight, I said at some point in the fight that Donair needed to do something to change the momentum of the fight. Rubio has to do something immediately to change the tempo of the fight. Meaning land something significant? To get some respect, because if he doesn't, Gennady Golovkin will walk right through you. Rubio can punch, and he's experienced. Everybody talks about Golovkin's power punching. He lands more jabs per round than any top fighter in the sport. An average of 11 jabs landed per round. Fighters throw a lot of jabs, generally don't land them at a very high percentage. His body punching has also been known to be devastating. He also keeps his chin tucked well, controls distance well, cuts the ring well. 350 yep. amateur fights, 30 pro fights, never knocked down. Very economical, a guy that doesn't waste a lot of punches. And he's fighting this fight this fight pretty smart from the start. He's standing right in, not wasting a lot of energy because he knows that Rubio with the experience factor probably expects to take him the distance or try to get him in that deep water, which is what we call the late rounds. Rubio's landed a couple of pretty good shots. Back to Lovkin up at one point with a jab. Lands a hard right to the body there. When, when Golovkin jabs, his right hand comes out a little bit, too, to catch a counter. And it's uh, discouraging for his opponent. And there are two thudding right hands upstairs by Golovkin, the second of which backs Rubio up a couple steps. Good thing for Rubio was that he blocked both of them, and that's probably why he kept that weight advantage, so that he can with, withstand this type of an onslaught. Critics say he's too available to be hit. He hasn't been tested. And at some point, you expect to see something bad happen, and we'll find out how he deals with adversity. But it hasn't happened yet. And even though the Dodgers have been knocked out of postseason baseball, Rubio, or excuse me, Golubkin, has a Dodger logo on his trunks, hoping to help build a little more affection here in Southern California. And Adrian Gonzalez is in the crowd. Dodger first baseman. A hard hook and a right hand by Golovkin. Rubio comes back with a right hand of his own. Yeah, he did he answer that right back immediately. Like a pro. Yes, he did. Like a seasoned oh. veteran. And Golovkin seems to know that Rubio can punch a little bit. He does. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Okay. How do you feel the power? No, nothing good. So now, what do you have to do? When you throw, double, double, uh, blend your knees. Now, don't let him, don't let him fake you. Don't let him fake you. Don't lead it up. Huh? Close it up when you're on the inside, on the inside, on the inside, those punches. And push him back, push him back. Send him back with those punches. Okay, we got to be inside first. We got three or four rounds to practice and do the things we want to do. Right? Okay. Max. Max. He's Gennady coming forward. They, they exchange hooks, then he lands an overhand right, followed by another overhand right. Probably his best two punches, but Rubio did try to answer back with the right uppercut. Yeah, Rubio speared him with that right uppercut, answering back effectively, but copy box numbers in round one. Golovkin 30 out of 71, Rubio 15 out of 59. GGG with a 16 to 10 edge 
in power shots. Good right hand from Rubio. No great power puncher is an immaculate defender, and Golovkin is no different than that. So far, his chin has withstood everything, and right now, he's getting to throw. But power he shots at Rubio. He talks not only of his Mexican style, Golovkin, but of his predator instinct, and you can see it there. He's always looking to attack and to hurt. Rubio working to the body, getting in a couple of good shots. Golovkin comes back to the body and gets in a better shot. Did they exchange some really good body shots in that last exchange? Oh, good up. Hard uppercut by Golovkin. Momentarily wobbled Rubio. Now he's got him pinned against the ropes. Let's see how he varies here. Predator at work. Down goes Rubio. Touch, touch, touch. <laughs> smash. Cinco. Left hook Six. smash. Siete. Ocho. Nueve. Yes. Second round knockout. He didn't make it up. Rubio is indicating that he didn't hear the count or that something happened to the back of his head, but it looked to me, Roy, like he wasn't... He'd had enough. He didn't want to get up. It had the feel of a short count, but it didn't look as though he was alert enough to get up. What do you say, Roy? Well, I thought he was alert enough. I just think he laid there thinking he had more time, and I don't think he had as much time as he thought that he had. Academic, really. Yes, it was only a matter of time. It's always just a matter of time. Second round knockout. And with a little shrug and a big hug, Rubio shows his respect for Gennady G. Golovkin. Mexican star. You know, I got to say, considering here in Southern California, so many fans showing up, um, Mexican fighter, and a lot of, in front of a lot of Mexican-American fight fans here, doesn't make weight. Rubio, real nice guy, a, a good career so far, doesn't make weight, doesn't fight back to the extent that maybe you thought he would, and seems to have been content to lay on the canvas once he was knocked down. A little bit surprising and less than perfectly satisfying. And suggests that he didn't really think he had a chance. He, he fought as though he thought he had a chance. He was firing right hands. Well, this uppercut right here, as you see from Triple G, a left hook to the head followed by a beautiful right uppercut, that would make you quickly realize that maybe you don't have a chance and maybe you have stepped in a, a, a fire a little bit more hotter than you expected it to be. Followed by a beautiful body shot, then he continues the attack. But that right uppercut was a devastating shot, and then down he goes from the left hook. And maybe that is to Golovkin's credit that he could beat the fight out of a real fighter like Rubio seemingly so easily. And look yeah. at how he adjusted the arc that's what on Rubio, the left hook that's what Rubio to get said. it over Rubio's guard. He said he hit me in the top of the head. He sure did. And he seemed like he jammed your neck down to where your chin was supposed to be. And my goodness, what a power shot that guy can throw. Here's Michael Buffer with the official particulars on the knockout. He's looking at the replay and enjoying it just like us. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at one minute and 19 of round number two. The winner by knockout victory, his record now, 31 fights, 31 victories, 28 knockouts, 18 consecutive knockouts to date, and he is still the undefeated middleweight champion of the world, Gennady. Triple G. Golovkin. You know, Roy, this is very much like the early days of Mike Tyson. You're going to get your money's worth, but you got to get it in a hurry. It doesn't last long. Every time he steps in the ring, you better have your popcorn already gotten, have your sodas already ready, and you may have a mouth full of it because if you look down to take a bite or a drink, you might miss the fight. Final CompuBox numbers. Gennady Golovkin landing 45 out of 99. So he lands 24 more. He throws 23 more. He lands at a significantly higher connect percentage. And he destroys Rubio with power punches, just as he's done with every other opponent so far. Power shots. Power shots. Ah, there we go. Landed 28 to 13 for Rubio. 
through 54 to 40 for Rubio. Anytime a fighter lands at above 50% in the power punch category, he's almost certain to be the winner of the fight. Max Kellerman stands by with Triple G. Gennady, you said that this is not a dance, it's a fight. You call this Mexican style that you love to fight. Did you love this fight? Of course I love this fight. Max, give me a chance, just I take my fans. Thank you very much. Buenas noches, amigos. Buenas noches, Tapja. ¿Cómo estás bien? Yeah. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias, Mexican style. Muchas gracias, champion, campeón. Thank you very much. So tell me about this fight. Of course, of course, I like fight. I don't like dancing, I like fight. This is true fight. Did Rubio put up the kind of fight that you were expecting? Yes, of course. Yeah, you know, just Rubio, he's not step back. You know, he's fighter, he's a good fighter. Respect him. Did you think he was gonna get up from that knockdown? You know, yeah, first time, I'm not very hard punch. Just throw him. I think he's get up. Okay, Gennady, we've seen you now destroy all the contender middleweights who are not elite middleweights. We know that you've wanted to fight an elite middleweight for a while now. What is the plan after this knockout? Max, look at me. I have three belts. You know, I'm saying here. I won't fight everybody. Just I, th I think next year, next fight, if Pepper you fight with great champions. Meaning who? Doesn't matter. I think first, Miguel Cotto. Respect him. He's great champions. Miguel Cotto. The promotional issue with Canelo Alvarez in terms of an impediment to making that fight seems to be resolved. What about Canelo? Of course, of course. I respect him. He's a good boy. You know, and Chavez Jr. too. I won't fight. And I think so. First, Miguel. Respect him. Gennady, this is the first time fighting uh, in Southern California. You sold out all the tickets. Next time, I'm sure it'll be a bigger venue than it was today. When can we expect you back? in Los Angeles. Of course, this is my first fight in California, yeah. First, thank you very much for my fans, for my friends. Thank you, guys. I love you. That'll do. Congratulations, as usual, Triple G. Jim?